Hey everyone, we got some PTO news specifically with the Toronto Maple Leafs signing Steven Lorenz to a PTO and the Calgary Flames signing Tyson Berry to a PTO. Let's talk about it. If you're a new subscriber, welcome. I hope you do hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. Definitely please hit that like button. Thumbs up are always greatly appreciated. Comment down below if you have and your thoughts. And I hope you hit the notification bell so you get notified when I make a video or stream. So... A lot of chatter right now. Steven Lorenz just won a Stanley Cup with the Florida Panthers with new signings in OEL. And you're looking at OEL as kind of that veteran. And then you're looking at Anthony Stolarz, who the Leafs just signed as well, as that veteran backup goalie to Joseph Wolf. So the Leafs are bringing in the former Panthers who just won the Cup. Uh, but yeah, that's a lot of the conversation. Also... A lot of the conversation from Florida Panthers, writers, reporters, is that Steven Lorenz is just a top-notch guy, really nice guy, one of the nicer guys in the league. Uh, Cheap Ruby on Twitter shouts, says Steven Lorenz had the same amount of playoff points as Mitch Marner and more points than Robertson. Again, that's in one round, but you, you just highlight the fact that Lorenz was part of a deep playoff run with the Florida Panthers. I believe he actually scored a couple goals. I, I, I don't... Mm, he had he had three points but Lorenz had a big goal or two I remember and I mean he had some even strength offense I'm pretty sure he, good defensive guy as well so yeah and oh Kevin says it right here so Lorenz doesn't bring much to the table offensively but one area that he could help is the PK 240 forwards have played 100 plus 45 minutes over the last three seasons he's the 13th best that is a huge selling point for sure and then Frank Saravelli on the Tyson Berry PTO. One season removed from a 13-goal, 55-point campaign. He isn't the only surprising name to linger this long. So Tyson Berry could get a veteran opportunity with the Calgary Flames as, as a contract, and then maybe he gets flipped to the deadline in terms of an addition. The only thing that's arguing that is the fact that he was available from Nashville side of things, didn't get traded. So maybe on a minimum-type deal for Tyson Berry and a bounce-back season, he could become more valuable towards the deadline. So... I just wanted to have that conversation quickly, guys, um, but more so just talking about what the Leafs could do next. And if they sign Lorenz, what could it look like? Let's look at it right now. So I could see the Leafs making a few moves or at least a couple before the season, whether it's a trade and then a signing. Uh, there's been a lot of rumors to suggest that they're going to sign Max Pacioretty, but again, maybe you're watching this video and he signed somewhere else. But they could also sign a different veteran forward, like former Leaf JVR. So you look at JVR, you look at Pacioretty, maybe sign one of those Americans playing with Matthews. Maybe they have, that boosts their play, and yeah, they're older, but there's scoring ability there, and there's veteran presence there. Also, playoff experience there. So I think regardless, you're going to see the Leafs look at one more veteran forward, I think. Maybe they make a change on the defense, but I think the goaltending is they're settled with Wool and Stolers going to the year. So you sign guys like that. Maybe you trade Yarncrow to a team that, whether they're not close to the floor or they need more, and obviously um, Montreal is another team that might make a few moves in terms of salary cap. Uh, Columbus, Anaheim, there's teams out there that are going to make some moves. So when you look at this scenario, this makes sense for the Leafs. They've got $1.6 million of cap space, as you can see at the top there, in this scenario. Shedding the Yarn Crow contract. You've got Pat Reddy, Matthew Dyes. Matthews Nyes, American Arizona boys, joined by that Patch Reddy signing. And then you look at the depth options here, Domi, Camp, Marner. Again, do you want Camp as your third liner? Probably not. But Camp and Marner have spent a lot of time together on the penalty kill. They've had some chemistry there. I think this is actually a good balanced third line. Sorry, my face is covering it there. But Marner, the playmaker superstar, Domi, also the playmaker. Maybe this gives Marner more opportunity to score. They were teammates in London in the OHL. Camp, maybe this brings more production out of him, having two playmakers that could just feed it to him. And Camp, you got to force yourself to score more, man. So it's just good depth options. You have like kind of size, speed, scoring, all balanced throughout these lines. Like there's no line that lacks any of what I just said, right? Bobby McMahon, size with Tavares and Nylander. Tavares can handle himself. Nylander, more of the skill guy. You have everything on each line, and then you have your fourth line as it is, and then Lorenz is the 13th forward. I could seriously see Lorenz as the 13th forward. And as you guys see, I didn't really include Robertson here. I think Robertson could also be in a trade to Columbus. Give him an opportunity. Um, we'll see what happens, of course. And, and, and this is going to be a conversation, and I didn't say it earlier. 
of course, with the tragic death of Johnny Goudreau, what's going to happen going forward for Columbus on the hockey side of things? And I, I, I can like, it doesn't even seem real to talk about that. So I think Columbus is going to be involved in maybe some moves at some point later in the season. Obviously want to have full respect for everything to do with Johnny hockey. And that's completely the focus. And, and hopefully the team can come together and, 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 and feel supported by the community. So Columbus is going to have that situation and it's going to be looming over the team as well. So, um, we're going to see what happens with Columbus. I, I truly can't believe I'm talking about that, right? So we'll see. But John, uh, Johnny Goudreau, that's going to be the conversation for Columbus to start the season. Um, at the same time, it's going to be a situation where Columbus is, as on the hockey side of things, is going to need guys to step up. So a guy like Nick Robertson, maybe that's a scenario there. I've talked about California teams. I've talked about other teams. But um, – We'll see on those side of things. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. Let me know what you guys think on the Leafs, what they're going to do to start the season. And, yeah, this is, I would say, a very balanced lineup compared to what we've seen in past years, if this ends up being the case. Again, think about Easton Cowan. Think about Fraser Minton. Maybe they're guys that battle for the third line spot. Maybe Fraser Minton battles for the third line center spot. So, um, there's a lot of consideration but Steven Lorenz signing a PTO with Toronto. This is my own signing there. He didn't actually sign a contract yet with Toronto. It's a, completely a PTO. And we will see if he makes the team out of training camp. So thank you guys so much. We'll talk soon. Peace.